Hello and welcome to a new video of Multiversum Go. This video is dedicated to our own research and this research is all about the analysis of the mummy's implants, skin surface, anatomical abnormalities, then the possible historical background and the location of the mummy's tomb. The analysis of the implants is of course preceded by sampling. The mummy that you can see now has not yet been presented to the public. So you are witnessing a premiere, a world premiere. Well, if that is not something, the mummy you are about to see is called Edgarda. By the way, this boring human name wasn't our idea, but of those who acquired this mummy from the Tomb Raider and whose names we cannot mention here because we were not granted their permission. They made this mummy available to us for analysis at short notice, a rather inconvenient part of this research. At the moment, the mummies ultimately end up in the hands of the highest bidder or the person who can persuade the current owner with many warm words that there will be advantages for him, for example, increasing awareness of the mummies, research that will then Unfortunately, one has to say, increase the sales value of the objects, even if he just rents the mummy at low price. Some mummies have already passed into the hands of private collectionists. I had expressed my suspicion in the last video. Unfortunately, it was recently confirmed to me. The mummy at Garda is indeed special. The head is tilted slightly, and depending on the angle, it looks if the creature suffered before its death. Of course, I'm not the only one who would like to know what caused the death of the tridactyls and whether they all died around the same time. Well, of course, if they were once in fact living, breathing beings. The mummy is approximately 60 centimeters long and has a typical three-fingered hands and the three-toed feet. The abdominal area is elevated so it can be assumed that Edgarda also has eggs in her body. What we will be particularly interested in today are the three implants on the chest and in the right shoulder area. The sampling took much longer than this video suggests. We were busy for hours, including the subsequent evaluation of the data we received. What this video is about is showing you that our own research is not meaningless chit-chat, that it is actually happening. And photos and videos are worth a thousand words, far more memorable than the lecture of a long research report, which we have of course elaborated and which will be made publicly available at the end of this month. We will then provide the corresponding link. As you can see here, a special medical circular saw is used. Those instruments are needed to saw material made of titanium and stainless steel up to 6 cm thick. Titanium, for example, has very little elasticity and, due to its toughness, generates intense heat when being processed. You can imagine that everything would blow up in your face if you didn't have the right tools or the right person at work. There are a total of three implants on the front of this mummy, two in the chest and one in the shoulder area. First, it was determined which implant we would partially destroy in the process, because even if it wasn't that clear for some people, every sampling damages a part of the body being examined. The size of the sample has been determined beforehand, then the fine sawing work begins carefully, step by step, until you reach the point where you can carefully remove the cut piece from the surface without destroying other material or as little as possible. We end up seeing the dead tissue that lay beneath the sample we just removed and of course has lost all elasticity. This tissue appears copper colored, probably also influenced by the implant. After the sample can finally be carefully removed, it is placed in the sterile transport container, which is sealed and labeled accordingly. 
This is how it will be with the next sample of the implant, which will be taken from the loose forearm, namely from the hand area. This part of the body is rather less interesting at first glance. With such a long-fingered tridactyl hand, we would all prefer to see the entire body, but you will notice that the thing has its own charm. On the one hand, due to its size, which corresponds approximately to human dimensions and looks like a part of the mummy Mariah, and on the other hand, because we will be able to see the bone structures clearly because of some x-rays, and also compare them. First, however, it's time to take samples. You are already somewhat familiar with the procedure. Again, the medical circular saw is used after we have chosen where to take the sample. So, this is the forearm in all its glory, and it looks like it was intentionally severed to mummify it separately, as diatomaceous earth was also carefully applied around the elbow joint. The necessary analysis to determine whether this is really the case still needs to be carried out. As with the three-fingered hands of the mummy Mariah, we are also dealing with five phalanges per finger. We now see the fingertips of the hand, on which you can clearly see fingerprints. We haven't been able to find them on the small mummies yet, but here they can be seen clearly. Contrary to initial claims by ufologists, the fingerprints are certainly similar to those of humans, and they probably serve the same purpose, namely that of a fine, sensitive sense of touch. We then wanted to know if it was actually bone structure, and for this purpose our specialist, Irwin, placed a small plate under the area he wanted to x-ray. After all, you don't want any background images of the objects below the hand. This big white thing, which looks something like an oversized laser gun, is a handheld digital x-ray unit. This is used to direct x-rays onto the part of the body to be examined for a fraction of a second. The radiation penetrating the body is made visible using a digital detector. Dense structures like bones are shown brightly. Less dense tissues such as fatty tissue are shown dark, while structures with a medium density, for instance soft tissue such as cartilage, are shown in different shades of grey. You can take precise recordings with it, which are transferred to the computer so that we can see the results directly in front of our eyes. On the screen we see the last phalanx with a nail, which was then measured and the result was a length of 18 mm. The penultimate phalanx can also be seen the maximum length of which is 22 millimeters. 
for comparison x-rays of a human hand were taken beforehand and at least in this case the mummy hand still turns out to be impressive because of its five limbs per finger although a human hand with five phalanges would probably be longer the penultimate phalanx was around 30 mm and the last 17 mm. Remember that the x-ray of the finger shown here comes from a living person and therefore there are differences from the image of the mummy finger on the x-ray in terms of the tissue structure. Later, analysis of the samples reveals the presence of mainly gold, silver and copper which is not unusual as these metals had been used in metalworking by ancient coastal cultures since a period around the birth of Christ. It is also much less surprising than one might think that these pieces were finely crafted. There are many pieces of jewellery from the Kunto Wasi culture in the northern part of Peru that are so finely crafted that details can hardly be seen with the naked eye. However, so far no pieces have been found that were made that way and also have a cavity in this reduced space. If you liked the video, which I hope you did, then please spread the word. YouTube doesn't grant any more features until we reach the magic mark of 4000 subscribers. And if it goes on the way it is, we may have them in 10 years from now. So, any help concerning this issue is highly appreciated. Bye for now, until the next video.